good motivation is that uh, the statements that we've all mentioned from the, the people of the past. Because uh, there was a statement that Sheikh Salih Usaymi mentioned um, from, I, f- I can't remember who it was, but it was like, لا يعرف الإخلاص إلا المخلصون That only the sincere people, they know what truly what Ikhlas is and the people of the past, they were obviously, you know, more sincere than us. So we need to look at their narrations and see how they would, beha- how they would behave um, to know what Ikhlas truly is. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're back after a long time. Obviously, had Ramadan. And yeah. How are you guys doing, man? Alhamdulillah. Good man. Like I didn't see you, man, yesterday. Anyways. So yeah, this is our first episode of season two. Inshallah. Season one was quite successful, I believe. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. So yeah. Make sure you share this episode with all your friends and family so we'll get straight into it. Okay. Today we'll be talking about sincerity. What is sincerity? So who would like to answer that question? Thank you. Bismillah. Uh, it was reported that Ibrahim ibn Adham, rahimahullah, he said that um, al-ikhlas sidq niyyati ma'allah. That ikhlas is correcting your intention with Allah. So when you think of doing an action, you do it for solely for the sake of Allah. And that's just like a little small definition of it. Yeah, another thing, um, Saeed ibn Javar, he said, Al-ikhlasu alla yushrika fi dinihi wa la yura'i fi amalihi ahada. He said that sincerity is not, it's not to associate partners with Allah um, in one's religion and, you know, showing off one's good deeds or acts of worship, basically. And I think um, that, that, that's, that definition is kind of inclusive in what not to do as well. Yeah. Because normally, obviously, we'll say sincerity is to um, your definition. Correct your attention. Yeah, correct your attention yeah. on Allah. But there's a condition to correcting your attention on Allah. Because obviously, it's a, it's, a, it's a correct statement, but it's, it's a bit vague. I think uh, if we mention like what not to do kind of thing, or like like aspects of shirk and uh, riya, I think it's, it becomes more, you know, more like accurate. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah. So like nisyan or um, al khalq. So you forget about what the people think about you, basically. Yeah. Now, I think you can go back to the hadith of um, um, Umar. Inshallah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a hadith that is probably one of the most famous hadiths uh, that was uh, narrated from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, so many ulama started the, the books with this. For example, um, Imam al Nawi started the 48 hadith, uh, Bukhari, I think, started uh, Umdatu al Ahkam as well. Um, so, yeah, it's a uh, it's hadith, Inna ma la'malu bin niyat, it's related to this part of the hadith is related to the action. So, if it's sahih, if it's fasid. So, but this, this, uh, this part. It's easy because you can't really do an action without an intention, and people sometimes they complicate, you know, um, like this, you know, saying the intention and stuff like that. So this is easy. But we're, we're, this is with uh, relation to how sincere you are with Allah. And uh, Sheikh, um, I think Shuair, he mentioned this. Uh, he mentioned the hadith of, uh, you know, a person who praises Salah. The reward is different for the people. Some some people they get the full reward. Some people to get thuluth, rubu. So um, yeah, so a person uh, in relation to how mukhlisi is with Allah, that this is what separates the people in terms of the reward. No. And um, the ayah is all Surah Al-Mulk, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. So this is the the purpose of our life is to have إحسان in عمل. And for Dayl ibn Yad, he was asked about this and he said um, about Ahsan uh, wa he said Akhlasu wa Aswabu The, what is most sincere for Allah and what is more um, in line with the Sunnah, what is most correct. So this is half of an action that a person does and this is the purpose of why we've been created to for Amal, to, to get good deeds. So if half of that is lost, then like your action is, is what's the point? And that's, that's the purpose of your life. So if you're not sincere, then you know, then it's, it's a waste. Mm. I think that's a good point you mentioned about the two pillars of Ibadah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, mm-hmm. the two conditions in it. So, yeah. uh, for for an action to be accepted, two conditions is being sincere, doing it only for Allah subhanahu wa taala, seeking His face, 
and the second is according to the Shia or according to the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you don't have both of these, you need both of them. If you have one of them, then your action is still not accepted. You need to have, you need to come with both of them for your action to be uh, accepted. Yeah. So I like can, can go back to the ayah in Surah Bayyina where Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Wa ma umiru illa li Abdullah mukhlisin lahu din." I have not commanded you except to worship Allah alone, mukhlisin lahu din, uh, sincerely for His sake. So yeah, I think that's where the two conditions come from from that ayah. Mm. And um, no. I wanted to mention something else. I know point on uh, sincerity. Yeah, um, it's also to show that like one of the characteristics of someone that's sincere is that he hides his good deeds the same way he hides his bad deeds. Mm. So you know, sometimes like say someone asks you, "What are you doing?" Mm. Like, da, 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 you always try and make an excuse for it. Mm. So if a mukhlis is someone that's sincere, they'll hide their good deeds to such an extent that um, it looks like it's as if that they, they don't do any good deeds at all. And I heard some reports from the Salaf where the way they used to hide their deeds, subhanAllah. I, I think you guys know the story of Sufyan Athori, rahimahullah, where he used to pray two separate tahajjud prayers because he had this like routine that he used to pray with his wife, right, at night. But then, subhanAllah, he used to check his, his sincerity so much that he used to wake up before the time that they wake up to pray. Mm. He used to pray by himself and he used to go back to sleep again. And then he prays another one with his wife again. And subhanAllah, so... If he kept it so secret like that, how do you know the story right now? Shut up, have you know? Once upon a time, his wife caught him. His wife was actually, she was pretending to sleep in it, but she saw him leave the bed and then he came back again. And then she's the one that narrated the story to us. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Allah has crazy. Sufyan thought, Allah, he's got, SubhanAllah, he was someone that really struggled or really wanted to perfect his intention. Yeah. There's this famous statement where he said, uh, he said He has not faced Battled anything Worse than his niya mm. Because it always turns Against me like Sometimes I'm narrating something some, And then my niya just changes Something like that And that's why There's another statement as well um, ربما أحدث بحديث واحد Sometimes he used to narrate One hadith Um and my niya just changes So then they said that It's famous, famous quote They say that فَحَدِيثٌ وَاحِدٌ One hadith يَحْتَاجُ إِلَى بَعْضِ الْأَحَدِ بَعْدِ النِّيَاتِ It requires several, several intentions Renew intention So imagine now you're teaching a dar So um, you're giving da'wah um, At the start you got like two, three people listening to you And then you're like Yes, I'm sincere, alhamdulillah You're feeling it You're like, okay, cool, I'm sincere And then Everyone just comes, like mm. 50 people or something like that. And then now you're starting to like quote different things. You're trying to, you know what I mean? You're trying to do it for them. Like, oh, let me try and impress these guys. Yeah. Be- beautify your da'wah, basically. Yeah. And it's so easy to, that's so easy to happen as mm. well, you know, subhanAllah. That's why you always have to constantly like renew intentions, mm. even as you speak. That's how sometimes, Allah alam in it, but when I see the scholars, they um, give them a dars, sometimes you just pause. I don't know, Allah alam, maybe, maybe they're just renewing their intention. You never know. But yeah, just, it's them ones, man. And anyone can be afflicted with it, whether you're alim, muta'alim, anything. It's hard, man. It's hard. Yeah. I think a sign of sincerity as well is that uh, Allah raises people who are sincere in the dunya and in the akhirah. So like, for example, like the scholars, inshallah, it's like a sign, obviously. It's not, we can't say for sure, obviously, but it's a sign that they were sincere, that, that Allah spreads their works like, all across the world. Like, if you look at the scholars like Imam Ahmed, Ibn Taymiyyah, etc., like they, they, they didn't want fame yeah. But Allah raised them anyways And they're known like How many years after their death And everyone's still saying their name And they're still making They're making dua for them Every time they, their name is said Do you know what I'm saying We would say Ibn mm-hmm. Allah, mm-hmm. Allah. Like, So I think a sign of their sincerity Is that their works have spread everywhere And like their knowledge was beneficial for them Because it's still benefiting them After they've passed away Do you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. but Yeah that was a good point Moving on to our next question What is the importance of um, ikhlas? Why is it important? I think one thing we need to mention, subhanAllah, I came across this recently, innit? but everyone knows it, but it's quite recent. And it's just like, oh, like subhanAllah, it's, it's quite obvious, innit? but ikhlas is fard. I've never thought of it like that. Like it's wajib to be sincere. Obviously, everyone knows they have to be sincere to Allah, but just hearing that it's fard, and the definition of fard is ma yuthabu fa'il huwa yu aqib tariqu, something that you're rewarded if you do it, and then you're sinning if you leave it off. So if you leave off, uh, ikhlas You're sinning right Actually you can even fall into shirk Minor shirk like If you do it for other people But yeah um, 
that's the importance of it. It's for I think that's enough for, as the importance. And, and the delil for that is Allah has not commanded you accept to worship him alone with sincerity. Ikhlas. That's a command in it. Mm. Yeah. 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 Um, I came across something, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he said, Allah. So you're wrong with the, from the tabi'in, no. uh, he was asked, like, w- which deed is the best? And he said, uh, an nusru lillah, he said, like, sincerity to Allah. Um, and, you know, when you're talking about, like, like, obviously, obviously, seeking knowledge is a very, like, important act of worship. And, you know, some of the scholars say that seeking knowledge is, is, is the best act of worship. But but without without sincerity, seeking knowledge, it can't it, you bro, you can't get the you can't get the reward for seeking knowledge if, if your sincerity is not there kind of thing. You get it. Mm. So I think that's another important thing um to remember. Because um, a lot of people I don't know, I feel like a lot of people don't take like even amongst our, um ourselves, for example, a lot of people we don't we don't strive to it's not really a thing we talk about to an extent where obviously we were talking about different stuff to learn different things to you know to take knowledge from but i think what's more important is 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 fixing your sincerity not, yeah as well. continuously as well yeah as abdullah mentioned it's always fluctuating as sufian uh, as you mentioned like it's always fluctuating it's always um you know you always have to renew it kind of thing um and this is definitely a trait uh, of, of the scholars as well and, and the people of the past. So I think, yeah, that's very important um, to mention in that. Uh, yeah, and <coughs> with regards to what you mentioned about the ilm, the statement of Imam Ahmed, Al-ilm la ta'adinuhu shayan liman sahad niyatahu. So an ilm, nothing equates to it um, for one whose his intention is sincere. And then he was asked, um, how does a person make his intention sincere? And then he said, and uh, something along those lines so uh, a person because um jahl yani is a uh, it's like a, a disease uh, and a person because this this deen is is based upon knowledge you understand so uh, the ulama um they're like warathatul anbiya so they're the ones you know that you know the they take the inheritance of the prophets and you know, they show the people what's correct and what's incorrect. They they teach the people the deen, and without knowledge, like you understand, you don't, uh, you can't. Your your amal is not correct. And a person who has more knowledge, his his amals are gonna be his amal is gonna be uh, better because he's he's more he he knows more about Allah, yeah. so he's gonna be more sincere to Allah. Um, he's gonna know what's correct, what's upon the sunnah. Um, so yeah. Even just going from that, um, I know the scholars recommend that even if like your your sincerity is not like obviously you start off with a sincerity and obviously it's always fluctuating. But even while on the path of seek knowledge, let's say you have like um, a period where your class is is questionable kind of thing. Mm. Mm. Um, the the scholars just recommend to keep going, don't stop whatever you're doing, because a lot of people obviously it's good to renew intention and think about. It, but the scholars advise to continue because knowledge. Is the removal of ignorance, mm. and not and, and and you know, knowledge is like um, it's a way of fearing Allah kind of thing. So when you fear Allah, your ikhlas is is, is established. Then you get. It. So that's another thing as well. Just I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. yeah, I think also you can say that, especially seeking knowledge. Uh, it can be it's an easy way for people to you know recognize you and yeah. especially within like your circles. Mm. So sincerity, first and foremost, is so important in that, first of all, because you can be afflicted with, you know, fame and stuff like that. Allah can test you with fame, people like saying your name and that, that everyone loves you and stuff like that. So it's important that you stay sincere. And there's a hadith that the first three people to enter the hellfire, mm-hmm. one of them is a scholar who, who only sought knowledge just for people to say his name and so he can be famous. And he's one of the first ones to be thrown in the hellfire because he wasn't sincere. He didn't do it for Allah, he did it for the people. He did it for fame. So if you are seeking knowledge, so, so important Even in the books Of like the adab of a, of a talib Of a student The first thing They always mention Is sincerity Because that's the most That's erif, that's all your ilm Is based upon the, Your sincerity Otherwise none of it None of it will benefit you At all It will be a proof Against you uh, In fact So Definitely If you're seeking knowledge It's so important That you stay sincere Do you want to just Mention the other two Because I think They're important Lies in the, the other two Are uh, thrown in the hellfire Yeah 
uh, yeah, one of them is the martyr. Yeah. Uh, the martyr who dies in battle. Yeah. But he only died so uh, people can say he's like a, yeah. a valiant, yeah, 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 brave yeah, yeah. figure. Yeah. Right? Didn't do it for the sake of Allah. Yeah, he didn't do it. Mm. So, yeah. And the third one is the Qari. Uh, the Qari who uh, resides. Yeah, was yeah, wasn't yeah. that one like the, the guy who Sadaqa? Yeah, Sadaqa. That one, yeah. Oh, the one who gives charity. Yeah, yeah, charity. He gives charity for the people. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah and it shows in even in other actions that yeah. like you just have to say sincere, otherwise it will be a proof against you. Mm. So like going back to the since like the action is not accepted unless the two things are there. And even going back to the two action the two conditions, sorry, what's upon the sunnah, you can't you can't know what's upon the sunnah unless you have knowledge, you have knowledge of what that the, the sunnah is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. So it goes back to all of that. It all goes back to ilm and knowing and yeah. That's a good point you mentioned, you know. Like even an alim can be afflicted with that. Um and I think there was, uh, I think it was a Sahaba or a Tabi, Allah Alam, who said it. But they said that if I was certain, 100% guaranteed that one, any action that I do is accepted by Allah, I'd be the most happiest person ever. I think, uh, I think Umar ibn al Khattab said something similar. Mm. He said, like, one sujood or something. He said, like, if, if he knew that one sujood of his was accepted, no. he'd be, he'd be yeah, in a happy no, state. Probably that. Yeah. I heard something along those lines. Yeah. But I forgot yeah. who it was from. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. So that just shows what, like, <laughs> You know, even like sometimes um, someone that seeks a lot of knowledge or someone that's got a high status, yeah. Um, a lot of people might look up to them and be like, oh man, I want to be like this, I want to be like this. But then that's not the goal. Like you mentioned before, that's seeking knowledge is not the goal. Mm. It's just a, it's a wasila. It's a means, it's a yeah, means no. to get to the goal, which is taqwa of Allah. The reason why we're created, to worship Allah. Mm. So seeking knowledge is just to worship Allah for the sake of worshiping Allah in the best way, innit? So that's why someone that looks up to someone like that, they shouldn't be put off that much because all you have to think about is what you have, act upon it and be sincere. That's it. Because you never know one action that you do can be so sincere that Allah enters you into genital for those and enters someone that has knowledge in the lower Jannah. You never know. So that's why that's another point to mention Like when it comes to people, I don't know, like just giving importance to stuff that is not as important as sincerity. As you said before, sincerity without it is a pillar of every ibadah. Mm -hmm. Without it, you start any ibadah, should start sincerity. Basically, whatever, yeah. whatever you can do in it, make yeah. sure that it's sincere, even if it's little, yeah. even if it's small. Just make sure it's sincere and only for Allah. Yeah. And always ask Allah as well to purify your intentions, make what you do sincerely for Him, and accept and accept your ibadah as well. Mm. Always, you should always make the one ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for that. Mm. Allah, that's one. Of us. Yeah, man, it's, it's very important. I can't like we need to emphasize it a lot, man. Yeah. But yeah, may Allah make make us all sincere, man. Yeah. Like just leaving off the praise of the people. Like if you if you if you feel as if like you don't like it when people praise you, that's a good sign that you're sincere. Inshallah, Inshallah. you don't like the praise of the people. Yeah, no. So yeah, that goes into the next part now. What is riya? Riya, riya you can say is the the opposite of ikhlas. Nah, I'm doing, ikhlas. doing it <laughs> not not for the sake of Allah, not rectifying your intention, mm -hmm. just doing it for the people. Uh, Allah says in the Quran, "Fawailul al-Musallin al-ladinhum an salatihim sahun al-ladinhum yiraun." So woe to the ones who pray, right? Those who do not like correct or like rectify their prayers, and those who do it only only to be seen, basically. Mm. And uh, yeah, so Ria is like, you do something not for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, do it for other things. You do it for the people to see, for to be famous or whatever. Also, people can say, oh, look at him, he prays. Look at him, he seeks knowledge. That's what Ria is, and it can it's considered a minor shirk, not not major shirk. So it won't take you out of the fold of Islam, but it's. Uh, it's worse than the major sins and it's very, very dangerous and it's easy to fall into as well. Yeah, very easy to fall very into. Very easy to fall into. <clears throat> but one thing that I would say with regards to this um, that was mentioned uh, is that people, they leave off actions because of fear of Riyah. So like, someone may go to the extreme of like, he doesn't pray in the masjid because you think someone is that, is, is, is a class is going to be fine. accepted. But the thing about that is, yeah, what's that person's concern? It's the people. You know it's not Allah So a per like, don't go to that extreme Of just leaving off actions Like doing them in public But a way to you know Combat that is um, You do your actions in public But you do more in private as well So it just Yeah yeah. Even yeah. Fudayli bin Yassir about that Tarq al-amal Min ajl al-nas riya Al-amal min ajl al-nas shirk So he said yeah. Leaving an action for the people is riya yeah. And doing an action for the people is shirk so even if yeah. leaving it off saying oh you're, you're still thinking about the people yeah. you know what I mean why are you thinking about the people think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do this for Allah and then nothing will affect you yeah. exactly then nothing will affect you you'll keep doing it there's another narration I think Ibrahim al Nakhai, you know he said if you're praying and shaitan comes to you and says um, you're doing this for the people you're showing off 
then increase its length, make it even longer. Yeah, so basically, saying that ignore the, it's all was was. That's why at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's just whispers from Shaitan telling you, to, he's trying to make you leave off that action. So whatever you do, and if Shaitan's come to you, you know, billah, seek the refuge of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and carry on. Don't don't leave it off like Isa said as well. Just keep on going. Yeah. It gets hard sometimes, you know. Well, like it's hard because you're trying to balance between not showing off and not leaving off a good deed for the people. It's hard to balance it, like especially in like. Some situations where even in class, like trying to ask questions, but you're like, oh, I don't want to ask questions because I'm going to be seen as someone that's enthusiastic or something like that. But that's what's going to say, so yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Stuff like that. Because that it, question you ask could be benefit of yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. I just don't make make sure it doesn't get you to a stage where you leave off doing things because of the people. Just but at the same yourself. time, you have to hide your deeds as well. It's a hard balance, I can't lie. You should have both in it. Like, yeah, it's a hard balance. It? And if you, if you do act in private as well, then you know for sure, like not for sure, but as in, if only you and Allah knows yeah. that action, and there's no, there's like minimal to no risk of riyah, because only yeah, yeah. you and you and Allah knows. And obviously, don't go and tell people after. Oh yeah, look, <laughs> I prayed the whole night. I was so tired and you know, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> even even if you even if it's not, you're not. Um, you, even if you ask and say, even if you're just telling people just because whatever, it's still better off to not mention your good deeds. Mm -hmm. It's just still better because. You don't know. Maybe you keep telling people. You keep telling people, and eventually you're you're thinking to yourself, "Oh, like oh, may I just, I'm just saying this just so he can think I'm or that person can think I'm so pious and whatever." It's just better to leave it out, basically. Just eliminate the path altogether, basically. Yeah, Allah and the Salaf were very cautious about this, you know, hiding the deeds. Subhanallah. I heard there was a, there's a narration where um, a man will become a hafiz of the Quran. Mm. No one knows, not even his neighbors, his family. No one knows, only himself, him and Allah. Mm -hmm. Imagine half it. Right nowadays we're just like, oh, just like half it is normal. Yeah. But them, they just thought, nah. And subhanAllah, a brother, a brother told me this, subhanAllah, it was actually a very profound. He said, someone asked him, are you a half it? And I was like, don't worry. I was like, why bro, just tell me. And you know, he said, he said, would you ask me about my relation, my conversations with my mom? And the guy was like, no. So why ask you my, about my conversations with Allah? SubhanAllah. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Yeah. When I heard that, I was like, SubhanAllah, that's yeah. imagine, you know. But nowadays it's normal, isn't it? Oh, yeah. it's, oh, it's no, happy, it's there, there are exceptions to it. Yeah. 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 If you're trying to lead, I'm just saying you, people yeah. that are advertising. Yeah, we're like, talking about on a general yeah. level, yeah, no, yeah. 100%. Yeah. But you like, obviously, if like a teacher asks you and yeah. stuff like that, or if you have to tell someone that you are, because you can't just lead, then yeah, you have no, to tell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's, yeah. Man, that's that was profound, man, when I heard that. Yeah. Even when people they they start calling, they give they give themselves titles like oh, Qadi this, Qadi that, Sheikh that. Like if you're known by that, cool, but. I don't know, calling yourself that, like saying, yeah, yeah. Uh, half is this, you know, this is weird. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's a, it's a, it's a rocky road, man. It's a yeah, dangerous, it's dangerous gonna be path. hard to fight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure enough. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to add anything else? <coughs> Mustafa? No. I think we've covered it. Um, I just, it's a very important topic, man. So one more hadith. The Prophet Lassar said, um, mm -hmm. whoever does the action so people can hear it, then Allah, who hears everything, he hears that he's telling people about his deeds or he's making he's doing his deeds only for the people, then Allah he will degrade him and belittle him, like emphasizing that he will like just like ruin him basically. His deeds will not count and they like he's finished basically. SubhanAllah. So I think it's a very like dangerous that you keep saying say because what is this what is this deen? We're not doing it for Anyone. For for views or to, for people to see us and people to you know like, this is for Allah because we're Muslims you know we're submitting to the will of Allah subhanahu wa taala so how can you come now and and start doing things so people can see you and stuff like that it's hard honestly you have to battle your intentions well but you have to keep conscious and like thinking about your actions and thinking about what you're doing and always try and like stay away from the praise of the people or even just anything else even just like making your deeds just like habits do you know what I'm saying. You have to be conscious and like thinking about it, make your intention like since I'm doing this, I'm praying for Allah, I'm reading the Quran for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know what I mean? So it's always important to rectify your intentions and keep co keep conscious of them basically. Yeah. SubhanAllah, I've seen some brothers here. Well like may Allah bless them, yeah. Well like inshallah they're sincere in it. Like whenever they're telling me a story about something that happened in I don't know when they in the masjid or something, they try so hard not to mention that they were doing the act of worship. For example, yeah. Um this is separate. So for example, someone was like, ah, oh, someone received the message at like Fajr time, or like Qiyamul Layl time, innit? And he really wanted to reply, but it was like, ah, oh, if I reply, it's going to look like I'm awake. He might think I'm doing Ibadah, innit? 
So he didn't reply to him mm. <laughs> until the morning. <laughs> stuff like that. Wallah, it's just subhanAllah. And other stuff like when they're saying a story, say they were in Umrah, something happened, da-da-da. they won't say, ah, oh, bro, you know when I was in Umrah, it was nice, da-da-da. last year I went Umrah, da-da-da. and then this happened, this happened, this happened. They won't even mention that, just be like, bro, one time there was one guy came up to me, da-da-da. they will say the story like that. They won't mention the whole ibadah stuff in it. Obviously, sometimes you might not mean to like show off your deeds in it, but just to stay safe, stay away from like, even when conscious, you're narrating stuff. They're conscious about it, innit? They're, yeah. they're thinking that it could possibly seem like that, so it's better off not to say it. Yeah. Yeah. And just one last thing here yeah, before we wrap it up, inshallah. Oh, you're right. Um, uh, it depends, it depends. Um, if you're doubting your niyyah, that's a good sign. So if you're thinking, oh man, I don't think I'm sincere, just that doubt that you have, thinking that you're not sincere, it's a sign of sincerity. Because people that are not sincere, they'll just do it, they just carry on doing it. Mm. They won't question their sincerity. Yeah. There was no sincerity in the first Yeah, place. in the first place, exactly. But someone that's doubting it, Inshallah, just that's a good sign that you're sincere. It shows that you're striving. No. You're striving to have a good intention. Exactly. Yeah. No, I just want to. No, no, go on. Go on. Go on, go on. Go on, go on. I was, no, no, it's calm. If free you free to for say all, that. man. Free for all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, this, it reminds me of a narration. It's not about sincerity, it's about nifaq. It's about hypocrisy. Yeah. He said, a man came to one of the scholars. He said, I, I, feel, I, feel, like, I feel I'm a hypocrite. Mm. And he asked him, Do you pray in the night? He said, Yeah, I do. He said, Then leave. You're not a hypocrite. Shows that you're doing an action in private. Obviously, he told him because he asked him it, but yeah, yeah. doing an action in private, it shows that he's not a hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? Because if he was, then he wouldn't. What's a hypocrite? He only shows, yeah. only does it. He appears to be Muslim, but inside he hides, hides yeah. kufr. Yeah. yeah. That's a good if you're doing things in private, then only Allah and you know, why would you do that if you were, if you were a hypocrite? You know what I'm saying? A hypocrite wouldn't do that. And a sign of insincerity is a sign of hypocrisy as well. That's, the, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, now go on. And I was just going to um, say, um, there was a hadith uh, at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said إِنَّمَا يُبْعَثُ النَّاسُ عَلَى نِيَتِهِمْ He said Verily the people on, on Judgment Day will be raised uh, f- By their intentions basically And I just wanted to um, mention this because like Because obviously the end goal is obviously Jannah inshallah Jannah to the obviously inshallah um, And obviously we have to Obviously, um, obviously we've discussed like Dunya times kind of thing and obviously, they do have like um, a more um, spiritual significance, or however, however you want to say it. But but it also helps you on Judgment Day. That's that's what that's what I wanted to emphasize in that because yeah, no, it's gonna be it's yeah, gonna right, be right. mad because no. no one will be rewarded except with sincerity. I was telling Surah Safat, man, "Wama tuzuna illa bima kuntum ta'malun." Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. They won't be rewarded except from what they used to do, except from what um Ibad Allah yeah, the slaves yeah, of Allah yeah, that were Muhlasin that were sincere. Yeah. SubhanAllah, I was gonna mention something that Asad said before about the link between insincerity and uh, munafiqina. Yeah. Allah said in the Quran in Surah Nisa, in al Munafiqina, you khadiun Allah wa khadiun with a qamu ila salati, qamu kusala, yura una nas. The munafiqin they plan to deceive Allah but Allah deceives them etc and then when they stand to prayer they're lazy and they show off to the people so you can just tell like showing off or riya is a characteristics of the munafiq mm. no. even the ayah mentioned some of them are hypocrites yeah, pray, yeah, yeah, they're majority. praying but they're hypocrites they're not, they're not Muslims yeah so yeah and there's even a hadith as well a famous one I don't know the full one but it's أخوف ما خاف عليكم الشرك الأصغر أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the thing that شرك خفي نعم نعم الشرك الخفي نعم one thing I fear for you the most is شرك الخفي and شرك الخفي is like the hidden شرك which is basically إريا نعم so yeah man this them ones well I think it was talking about the صلاة I think شرك شرك الخفي is talking about the صلاة thing like the صلاة for someone else basically a companion asked him what is شرك الخفي and then, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, no. the, uh, and then the Prophet وسلم, he said, it's a salah, you know, showing off uh, okay. salah for someone else. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, then I, if I'm not mistaken. Allah, I know. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, come on, come on. But yeah. How do you stay away from it though? Yeah, how do you stay away from showing off? I think Asin mentioned a good point, you know, he said, do you b- a lot of deeds in private. Private, yeah. You know? I'd say like a principle to stick by, do double the amount you do, if possible, mm-hmm. in public. Kind of thing. 
Wait, say that. Doesn't mean private. Double in private that you do in public. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay, so yeah. double the actually yeah, yeah. that you're public in private. Well, obviously that's a, that's obviously a personal. Like, nah, that's a good. That's yeah, a good so, technique. But I'm saying like, mm. it's a recommendation. Nah, what's, like, yeah. what's the most common like acts of worship that, that people see that showing off? Salah, I think. So like, yeah, things that are done in public. Exactly. Nah. So those kind of things you should double do more in private. Like. And also make du'a as well, man. Make du'a. Yeah. Make du'a. Make sincerity. Yeah. Is a du'a about sincerity. Yeah. Allah, oh Allah, I seek refuge in you. With you or in you? With you. With you. What's this? Well, like, translation. Okay. I seek refuge in you from. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I lost translation, I lost chain of thought. Oh, Allah okay, I seek refuge in you from that which I know and from that which I don't know. So basically, let's talk about Ariya, innit? Yeah. Wait, I lost it, Allah. <laughs> the, the, the shuk that you know and you don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I seek refuge in you from the shuk <laughs> that I don't know of and the shuk that I do know. Oh, he knows. Am I right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I think you're... I've heard that du'a. Translation yeah, but yeah, just, just take the du'a, <laughs> yeah, just look up, look up the du'a, and um, it's everywhere, in Hassan Muslim, everywhere. Yeah, it's in Hassan Muslim, yeah, I think. Nah, I'm just look over the translation, and I'm, I'm bad at translating. Sure. Oh, you can just link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't find it, because let, let them find it, because they'll come across something else, so they can if benefit more. find it, comment down below, so the man can read it. But yeah, any other ways of stopping that? No, I'd say, um, I think Abdullah mentioned is being conscious of like your sincerity. Um, if it knows like, uh, it might have been Omar ibn al-Khattab, like, he, he was just trying to check if he was from amongst the hypocrites or something. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so like stuff like that, like you're, you're conscious of you being a hypocrite. Like imagine, imagine that, like, the Sahaba, like, I'm gonna be in Khattab, exactly. bro. Like, he's one of he, he was, yeah. I, I think it comes with ilm as well. Yeah, 100%. If you have knowledge of Allah yeah. and yeah. the Akhirah, you just care yeah. about that. You don't care about the dunya, you care about the Akhirah. That's it, you want to get rewarded. And especially if you've got a lot of knowledge, yeah, and you're questioning your sincerity, it's like all of this, imagine, it can just go because mm. of my sincerity wasn't yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 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 That's, that's, point. That's, that only comes with knowledge, bro. Yeah. Trust me. But also, with yeah. what Issa said about, you know, being conscious. Don't let it get to a point like uh, Mustafa said that you're having wasps you're, you're yeah. staying away from good deeds because of this thing, yeah. Just to make sure there's a balance. Yeah, yeah, balance. yeah, of course, yeah, definitely. Yeah, just, mm. you have to just build up mentally. Just tell yourself, I don't care what these guys say. I'm doing it for single like that. Obviously, upon the truth, innit? No, I think it links to like fear and hope and like, hope and uh, uh, Roger. Roger. Yeah. Yeah. Like have a balance between the two. Yeah. No. Because if you're too fearful, you're just going to miss your salah kind of thing. Mm-hmm. If you're too hopeful, you just won't care about your sincerity. Kind yeah, of thing you just do whatever. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. And uh, good motivation is that uh, the statements that we've all mentioned from that the people of the past. Because uh, there was a statement that Sheikh Salih Usaymi mentioned um, from, I, f- I can't remember who it was, but it was like, لا يعرف الإخلاص إلا المخلصون That only the sincere people, they know what truly what ikhlas is and the people of the past, they were obviously, you know, more sincere than us. So we need to look at their narrations and see how they would behave, how they would behave, um, to know what ikhlas truly is. That was your know. caption, innit? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I saw it, I remember, I remember. That's yeah. a good way to end it, man. Jazakallah khair. And there's another statement like, hey, إِذَا لَمْ تُخْلِسْ فَلَا تَتَعْبُ or something like that. If, you, if you're not sincere, then don't, don't even like, don't tie yourself, basically. Mm. Because there's really no point. Yeah, there's no point. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Please come to the bank. Trust me. <laughs> but yeah. Anyone else want to add anything? Or should we just wrap it up? Yeah, just wrap it up, man. Just make that in it. Just wrap it up. So yeah, that was the episode on sincerity. It felt good, man. <laughs> Finally, episode after a long time. <laughs> but yeah, man. Oh, see, this episode was inspired by... <laughs> Boy, the, the book, the Italian man. Oh, you know oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. So this this episode, one of the members they suggested we do certain topics on Ta'adim al Ali. So yeah, future episodes we might do other topics in that book. So if you haven't already, go through the book. Huh. And yeah, the next episode, hopefully you guys are excited as me. <laughs> None of these man. <laughs> but yeah, Alhamdulillah. That being said. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa